With this presentation, we will introduce you to fundamental concepts of human evolution. We will provide you with key basics to help you to push back on leftist narratives. It is going to be fast-paced. Best to take notes. You may need to rewind and watch the video multiple times. Let's get started. Carl Linnaeus is widely viewed as the father of natural history. He is credited with taxonomy classifications of animals and plants. Linnaeus invented the term Homo sapiens. Linnaeus was the son of a Lutheran pastor in Sweden. He became a medical doctor. Later on, he became a full-time naturalist and professor of botany at Uppsala University. He was a Christian man and believed in celebrating the beauty of God's creations. From FamousScientist.org Linnaeus proposed that God originally made just a few starting species. Over time, these starting species interbred, producing hybrids, resulting in a much broader range of species. Quote, Linnaeus, an 18th century Swedish botanist who categorized every single living being on the planet, he actually coined the phrase Homo sapien. Looking around the world at the diversity of humans, he said, well, you know, we seem to come in discrete subspecies, end quote. TED Lecture, 2007. Charles Darwin, as a young naturalist in the early 1800s, took a five-year journey around the world on the HMS Beagle. He collected wildlife samples, insects, and flora to bring back to England for museum collections and for further study. Darwin had just graduated as a seminary student from Christ Church College at Oxford in 1831. His rather famous uncle Erasmus and his medical doctor father applauded his decision to join the Beagle crew. It was during a long stay on the Galapagos Islands off the coast of South America while studying the exotic wildlife that Darwin came upon his theory of natural selection. From the New Republic, Charles Darwin Conservative, 2009. Darwin was not an atheist, but a Victorian believer. He was someone who favored individual liberty over big government. Darwin was an admirer of John Locke and Adam Smith, two of the greatest thinkers of freedom. In 1859, Darwin's greatest work was published, On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection, or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. From the National Geographic, natural selection is the process through which populations of living organisms adapt and change. Individuals in a population are naturally variable, meaning that they are all different in some ways. This variation means that some individuals have traits better suited to the environment than others. Quote, there is no doubt that the various races, when carefully compared and measured, differ much from each other as in texture of hair, proportions of all parts of the body, the capacity of the lungs, the capacity of the skull, and the brain. End quote. Charles Darwin, Descent of Man, 1879. Quote, Conservatives need Charles Darwin. The intellectual vitality of conservatism in the 21st century will depend on the success of conservatives in appealing to advances in the biology of human nature as confirming conservative thought. End quote. Larry Arnhart, political science professor, University of DeKalb, Illinois. From the Smithsonian, even before DNA analysis, Scientists knew humans belonged in the primate order. Carl Linnaeus classified humans with monkeys, apes, and other primates in his 18th century taxonomic system. Fossil evidence for the first proto-primates go back 55 million years ago. Monkeys emerged 40 million years ago. The first apes may have arisen in Africa approximately 20 million years ago. From Thought.com, Pro Council marks the time of primate evolution when the old world monkeys and apes diverged from a common ancestor. 
Its hands and feet were more flexible than those of contemporary monkeys, lacked tails, a distinctly ape-like trait. Proconsul lived from 23 to 17 million years ago. From MassiveSci.com, in 1948, Mary Leakey found an almost complete fossil skeleton of a slight ape-like species near Lake Victoria, later named Proconsul africanus. It is now considered the ancestral species of both apes and humans, which later split into two evolutionary paths. Humans split from chimpanzees and bonobos seven million years ago. It is generally hypothesized that the split occurred due to climate change. Deep jungles gave way to open savannas and grasslands. Sahelanthropus chidensis was discovered by a French team in the western Chad desert in 2001. It has been dated to six to seven million years ago. From the Smithsonian, Sahelanthropus chidensis is one of the oldest known species in the human family tree. Human-like features included small canine teeth, a short middle part of the face. The head of Sahelanthropus was held on an upright body associated with walking on two legs. Artipithecus ramidus then followed. Arti was discovered by the Tim White team in Ethiopia in 1994. It is dated to four to five million years ago. In 1926, anatomy professor Raymond Dart at the University of Witwatersrand in South Africa was attending a wedding party for his best friend. A crate arrived at the door. It was from a nearby quarry. He pried it open, and to his utter astonishment, at the bottom was an Australopithecine fossil, the Tong Child. Dart's friend, the rather eccentric and famously ill-mannered Dr. Robert Broom, continued to find additional fossils of Australopithecines in caves throughout South Africa in the 1930s and 40s. In 1974, paleoanthropologist Donald Johansson and his friend Tom Gray were exploring some gullies in the Ethiopian desert. It was midday and getting too hot to continue. They decided to take a walk back to the Land Rover, taking a different path. Johansson looked over his shoulder and spotted a hominid forearm bone. Then the pair found other scattered bones. They treaded carefully back to the Land Rover. From National Geographic. Discovered at Hadar, Ethiopia, Lucy, about 3.2 million years old, stood only a meter tall. She had powerful arms and long curved toes that allowed her to climb trees as well as walk upright. That night there was a wild celebration back at camp. As Arizona State University Institute for Human Studies described it, there was, quote, drinking, dancing, and singing, end quote. Some members of the crew played the Beatles, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, continuously on the cassette player. One of the partiers shouted out, why not call her Lucy? Johansson agreed. Fully 40% of Lucy's skeleton was eventually recovered. Finding the pelvis bone was particularly important to confirm upright walking. Lucy was a hominid, not a chimpanzee. To this day, it is considered the greatest find of a hominid skeleton of all time. Australopithecines had a side branch. Paranthropus boisei was discovered by Mary Leakey at Old Dubai Gorge, Tanzania, 1959. It's dated to 2.5 to 1.1 million years ago. Our own genus began 2.5 to 2.6 million years ago. Homo habilis, handyman, was also discovered by Mary Leakey in Old Divide Gorge in 1959. Homo habilis was likely the first species in genus Homo. 
Homo erectus arose in Africa 1.9 million years ago, but the species soon spread first to Southwest Asia, then to South Asia, and up to present-day China. Homo erectus survived on Java in Indonesia till 50,000 years ago. The first Homo erectus skull and bones were found on Java by an eccentric Dutch medical physician, Eugene Dubois, in 1891. Dubois was given prison labor by the Dutch government to conduct his excavations. After the emergence of Homo erectus, the fossil record gets increasingly complex. Paleoanthropologists call this the muddle in the middle. Homo heidelbergensis, for example, has been called poorly defined. The famous cowboy skull, dated 320,000 years ago, is assigned by some as Afro heidelbergensis. Others see it as its own species, Homo rhodesiensis. The fossils at Cima de los Huesos in Spain offer an alternative line. Homo antecessor 800,000 years ago, with a modern human like mid facial region, could be ancestral to Neanderthals, Denisovans, and modern humans. What appears to be fairly certain is that Neanderthals and Denisovans emerged on the Eurasian continent 400 to 550,000 years ago. The two branches likely diverged as a result of a glacial maximum approximately 400,000 years ago. Neanderthals roamed from northern Europe to southern Spain, all the way to central Eurasia. Denisovans lived from northern Siberia through Southeast Asia, all the way to present-day Indonesia. Another hominid emerged during this time period, Homo naledi in South Africa. Homo naledi is dated from 325,000 to 210,000 years ago. The species may have emerged as a sister species to Homo habilis. Over on the island of Flores in present-day Indonesia, another species arose 300,000 years ago, Homo floresiensis. Only 3.5 foot tall, they are believed to be descendants of an isolated group of Homo erectus. Jebel Urhud in Morocco is widely accepted as the first hard evidence of the emergence of Homo sapiens 320,000 years ago. However, very recent fossil finds in Israel 120,000 years ago, Bulgaria 45,000 years ago, and redating of the Epitoma 1 skull found in a cave in Greece 210,000 years ago suggest a separate origins path for Europeans. Cro-Magnon emerged in Western Europe 45,000 to 65,000 years ago. Cro-Magnon had 5 to 10 percent Neanderthal DNA admixture. Cro-Magnon is ancestral to modern Europeans. Leftists in evolutionary science, including some video activists shown here, do not expect those of us on the right to be well versed on human evolution topics. We have provided you with a great deal of basic information on human origins. It is our hope that you will take this knowledge and put it to work in fighting the leftists online, at work, and in your personal life. Public policy issues such as mass immigration, climate change, property rights, crime, and cultural decline are influenced hugely by social justice activists who claim to have science on their side. With some of the knowledge you have gained here, you can now call these leftists out on their lies, half-truths, slander, and blatant propaganda. Please use our channel as a resource to help you to fight back. Be sure to watch our other videos for specifics on some of the many human evolution topics we have introduced to you here. We have even created a playlist, Evolution for Conservatives. Be sure to subscribe.
Thank you for watching. Hit the like button, leave a comment, and please pass this video on to others. Thank you.